From the moment I first picked up a joystick at the age of three, I was fascinated with video games. The sheer idea that I could control the little character on the screen was the best thing since sliced bread to me. At the time the Commodore Amiga had begun reaching homes and games like I the Beholder series, Black Crypt, Hired Guns and the likes became a big part of my early gaming years, even if I did have difficulty playing them due to my young age. So whenever a new dungeon crawler pops up on the market, I get the nostalgic itch that just needs to be scratched an indie developer Hex Game Studio kindly allowed me to once again go down nostalgia lane and cover their early access dungeon crawler, Dungeon of Dragon Knight. Dungeon of Dragon Knight is a dungeon crawler currently in development and being developed and published by Indian developer Hex Game Studio. It released on Steam Early Access January 23rd, 2019 for PC, with a full release estimated for some time in July. Despite being an Early Access, Dungeon of Dragon Knight is a solid dungeon crawler experience, with excellent level design and monster design, engaging and absorbing gameplay and varied puzzles, mixed with a wonderful atmosphere and fabulous visuals that will keep you gripped from start to finish. Before we get started I would like to note that halfway through recording footage for this video the developer released an update that majorly overhauled the UI of the game. So to avoid any confusion the footage you are seeing right now is the old UI and this here is the brand new and improved UI. With that cleared up let's get started. You take on the role of a four person party who after their hometown was attacked by orcs as a last resort fled into an unknown forest becoming lost within it. Suddenly a woman appears in front of them pointing to a hut not far away saying she would provide food and water and a place to rest. However upon arriving at the hut the woman disappears and upon entering you find that it is in fact a cave. It is then that you are informed by a note I am assuming that the woman needs you to enter the cave and find the dragon knight sewn. It was a magical weapon that he intends on using to open the gates of hell upon the world. And so your descent into the dungeon begins in your search for the Dragon Knight and the powerful weapon that he possesses, hoping to stop him before he puts an end to the world as we know it. The plot to Dungeon of Dragon Knight, while basic and designed to simply create a setting and an objective for the player, is one of the more interesting ones for a dungeon crawler, certainly far more interesting than that of Legend of Grimrock. Though with that said, there isn't much from the perspective of lore throughout the game. I would have liked to have found letters, scrolls or something to that description that gives a bit of insight into the history of the dungeon and the background of the Dragon Knight himself to give the game a bit more of a mystery to it. As for the ending of the game, it is pretty good, finishing on what is the biggest cliffhanger I've seen from a game in a very long time. A bloody good cliffhanger too. So good in fact I wish the game didn't actually end where it does. At the time of writing I'm unsure as to whether they plan on continuing the story or if they intended on leaving the game with a Grand Canyon sized opening for a sequel that has endless possibilities of where it could go. Regardless it was an unexpected end and it certainly leaves you wanting more. And if it is intended for the setup of a sequel, Hex Game Studio already has me sold on it. Anyone who is familiar with the gameplay of the dungeon crawler genre will immediately feel right at home with Dungeon of Dragon Knight. The objective of the game is to descend into the dungeon floor by floor, defeating enemies and solving puzzles in your attempt to reach and defeat the Dragon Knight Zone with your four person party that you create. Before getting started with the game you get to choose whether you create your own party or start the game with a default party and if you would like to play in normal mode or old school mode. Old school mode being where you play the game without an in game map meaning you either need to use your memory with the floors or make your own maps for that true nostalgic experience for veterans which is always a good option. As for creating your party you get to choose each members name, race, class, skills, traits, stats and portrait. There are four races to choose from which are dragonborn, a humanoid dragon race, human, elf and dwarf where each of the races is suited to particular classes. The Dragonborn is a physically strong race, making them excellent fighters. The Elves are very nimble, making them good rangers. Dwarves make brilliant clerics and humans are the all-rounder race that can fit into pretty much any role. And the classes you get to choose from are Fighter, Ranger, Cleric, Wizard and Warlord. Fighters are your typical hardy frontliners that deal the melee damage and take a large percentage of the beatings. The Ranger specialises in ranged attacks and light weapons such as daggers. The Cleric is the team's healer, allowing them to restore health and even resurrect dead team members at higher levels, and specialise in a number of magic types including body, spirit, light and dark. The Wizard is your primary offensive magical character who specialises in arcane, fire, water, earth and air magic arts making them exceptionally powerful with magical attacks. And finally is the Warlord who is a mixture of the different types allowing them to be a warrior, archer, 
wizards all at the same time. But due to their hybrid nature, they aren't as powerful in any of those roles as the other classes that specialise in them. The races and classes of the game are nicely varied, with specific races giving particular bonuses to certain stats, making them extremely proficient with certain roles. It is a simple enough system and one that takes no time for those unfamiliar with the dungeon card to get to grips with, thanks to the information box. But with that said, the information given needs a bit of an overhaul as while the bonuses of the different races are explained, the classes are not. It is a minor detail but one that should be addressed for those who aren't as experienced with the genre. Once you've picked a team member's race and class, you get to choose what stats to distribute their stat points into, what skills to place skill points into and their traits. Each member has 16 stat points to distribute, 2 skill points, you gain a third skill points if your character is a human, and 2 trait points. Stats come in the form of strength, constitution, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom and charisma. Strength increases a character's physical attack power, constitution increases their health, dexterity increases their attack and dodge rate, intelligence increases their magical power if they are a wizard, wisdom increases your magical power if you're a cleric, and finally charisma increases defenses against magical attacks and their magic power if they are a warlord. Each of the stats have a particular role in the character's development depending on what class the character is. Warriors focus primarily on strength and constitution, rangers on dexterity and constitution, clerics on wisdom, and wizards on intelligence, while the warlord is a mixture of strength, constitution, charisma, and dexterity. But how you distribute your stat points into their specific roles are entirely up to you, allowing for some degree of personal character development, which is always a nice choice to have. The skills the character have available to them is dependent on their class, and each class has six skills that they can specialize in. Each skill has a total of five levels with most skills having specific unlocks at certain levels. For example, with the magic skills the higher the level the more spells that character can use. And for skills like athletics you gain additional carry weight capacity at level 3 or with praying you gain faster regeneration of MP at level 3. The skills of the game are relatively basic and don't have much complexity to them but by the time you reach the end game you'll have maxed out most of the skills. But specialising in specific skills early in the game can make life a lot easier, especially when things start to get a little more challenging. So some care is needed when deciding how you want to shape your character's skills, adding in some depth to it. Finally are the traits. Each character can choose up to two traits from the list displayed. These traits each grant various bonuses, such as extra skill points, extra stats and bonus to health and mana. They are small bonuses, but nevertheless help with giving your characters an extra little boost for the start of their adventure. After that you simply need to choose the name of each of the characters or you can have them randomly generated along with the portrait you want for each of them with there being a selection of male and female portraits for each of the races. The character creation of the game is very well done. It leaves enough room for customization in your party to keep experienced players happy while also not overcomplicating things to the point it would alienate newcomers to the genre, making it a very accessible system that is easy to come to grips with. Once you've created your party your journey begins and you start on the first floor of the dungeon. From here you need to battle monsters level up your party and solve puzzles. Let's start with the levelling up system. As you defeat enemies you gain experience points that are distributed between the party members. Upon levelling up you gain an additional stat point and skill point that you can distribute to the stat and skill of your choice. The skill often depends on what you want your character to specialise in and the stat depending on what role the party member plays. The higher the level your character is the more experience points are needed to gain another level. Like the party creation the level up system is pretty simple but nevertheless effective. As you progress in levels and increase your overall stats you begin to watch as your one weak party begin to do some serious damage, and the more you level up the more that damage increases, creating a real sense of satisfaction. The combat of Dungeon of Dragonite is exactly what you'd expect from a dungeon crawler. Each of your four party members combats enemies using their own special form of attack. Melee characters hit enemies using their weapons, rangers generally use a bow which requires arrows to be equipped in one of the item slots to the right of the portrait, or throwing weapons like rocks, throwing knives and shurikens. The magic attacks work very similar to that of Legend of Grimrock, where to cast a spell you need to to use the correct runes in the right order, that order never being more than two runes long. There are 12 runes in total, 6 unique runes for the cleric and 6 for the wizard. Throughout your journey you will find scrolls that have the rune combinations attached to them. Alternatively you can simply check the game's guide found in its folder for the spell list. The difference between the casting of magic in Dungeon of Dragon Knight and Legend of Grimrock is that once you have a spell cast, it will stay active by the player's portrait until you change over to another spell. You simply just right click on it to use the spell again. You will have to go back to the rune select to change the spell or to change back to the previous spell you were using if you switched it out for another. It keeps the fiddling of the runes down to a minimum, meaning you don't need to select the runes every single time you want to cast a spell, which was one of my many major gripes with Grimrock. It keeps the general flow of the combat easy going and moving at a fluent pace. But with that said, Dungeon of Dragon Knight's magic system isn't perfect. Right now when you find one of the spell scrolls it gives the rune combination and the icon of the spell, but not the name. 
This results in you having to either figure out the spell yourself by testing it or going to the game's guide which isn't very intuitive. I understand what the developer was going for by keeping the spell scrolls details to a minimum but even if it was just a case of adding the name of the spell onto the scroll it would make a huge difference as the player would immediately understand what it is and what it does from that alone. It isn't a major problem but one that can be minorly frustrating. The only other issue I would have with the combat is that right now it is a little bit too easy for those who enjoy more of a challenge with the combat. Additional difficulty settings would definitely not go astray as it means that those who want a challenge could have one while those playing more for the puzzles can also keep the difficulty as it is. Throughout the whole game I didn't die once to the enemies instead of the danger being in the form of traps so having an extra option at the start of the game to increase the combat difficulty would be great. There's also a nice variety of enemies in the game too each with their own form of attacks. Some of the more basic enemies like beetles and rats can only attack the front line but more powerful enemies like the bloody skeleton and elemental can even attack the back so the combat and how you deal with the enemies changes throughout the game keeping it from becoming stale. Aside from that the combat of Dungeon of Dragonite is great, it's fluent and easy to navigate keeping the pace of not just the combat but the game overall fast flowing with a nice cast of varying enemies to combat throughout. Right now the combat difficulty is suited more to those who are playing for the experience in puzzles. Combat veterans looking for a challenge won't find it just yet, but hopefully for the full release that option will be available. As for the puzzles of the game I'm going to straight out say it. They are some of the most creative and well designed puzzles you will find in a modern dungeon crawler. Some of the modern dungeon crawler puzzles generally consist mostly of portals and pressure pads, with the further you go in the game the more portals and pressure pads become involved, creating some very obnoxious and fiddly puzzles. But with Dungeon of Dragon Knight that isn't the case. Indeed there are portals and pressure pads, but they're never done to a ridiculous degree like that blasted portal room in the level trapped in Grimrock. Instead the puzzles are very often designed in a way that has meaning. For example, one puzzle uses 12 portals to symbolise a clock, each portal representing an hour. Hell, even the level Minos Maze is bloody brilliant. Unlike the name may suggest, it isn't a giant labyrinth full of minotaurs that is easy to get lost and disorientated in. Instead it is a level that consists of two separate areas that act like individual mazes, but due to some excellent design are actually quite easy to navigate with a bit of patience and thought. And this is coming from someone who has a particular impatience and hate for mazes. The puzzles overall have their slight challenge but they are never on a taxing level. The answer is always right in front of you, you just need to pay attention. Sometimes developers can get a bit carried away and play some very obtuse puzzles into the game but that isn't the case here and the game is all the better for it. You don't ever spend any large amount of time with any one puzzle. I think there was only one puzzle I genuinely got stuck on for a short while but other than that it was smooth sailing keeping the overall pace of the game moving resulting in an experience that suits both puzzle and combat fans of the genre. Another great feature of Dungeon of Dragon Knight is the shop. On each level of the dungeon there is a purple portal where when you enter it transports you to the Dragon Slayer Tavern. Here you can use the gold you find from monsters, chests and in secrets throughout the dungeon to buy new equipment and supplies for your journey. The further in the game you progress the more equipment becomes available for you to buy. From specific class armor that grants stat bonuses to weapons to potions to food and torches. Everything you need is available to buy if you have the coin. And any unwanted items that you find on your travels can also be sold here too, meaning no item ever goes to waste. You can also have your party completely healed here too, for a price of course. The more injured they are, the higher the price of healing. The shop is a great idea for the game and adds a whole new dimension to the dungeon crawler giving a real incentive to seek out and find the secrets to gain more gold. Right now however the shop does need some tweaking here and there. The UI for moving bought items from the shop to your inventory is really unintuitive right now. Where you need to select the item then click and drag it to the inventory of your character of choice and then you need to do this with every single item. A simple one click and drag and a move all items to the inventory button would be a far better choice. Along with that the prices of items are all over the place too. Weapons and armor cost a little bit too much, especially in the late game while all the food items cost the exact same amount of gold despite their replenishment values. So for example, moldy bread that restores 20 hunger is the same price as a chicken leg that restores 80. It results in you only ever buying the chicken legs making the other food types redundant unless you find them on your travels. But other than that, the shop is a really neat addition that adds an additional depth that its forebears are often missing. As a whole, the gameplay to Dungeon of Dragonite is excellently designed and brilliantly balance. The combat isn't too difficult while the puzzles are varied and well designed meaning that those who want to play for the puzzles won't be bogged down by the difficulty of combat and those who are playing for the combat won't be slowed down too much by the puzzles. And that is all the while being simple enough that pretty much anyone can play the game. Whether you are a newcomer or a veteran 
a puzzle enthusiast or a master of combat, Dungeon of Dragon Knight caters to everyone. The only real issues are that there aren't any difficulty options for the game resulting in it being a bit too easy for those looking for a challenge and that spell scrolls could really do with spell names attached to them and the shop needs a bit of tweaking. But other than that the gameplay of Dungeon of Dragon Knight is absolutely brilliant. The level design of Dungeon of Dragon Knight is amazing and some of the best I've ever seen in this genre. Throughout the game you'll encounter three different types of environment, the standard stone wall dungeon look, an area that has skulls and bones in the walls and the third environment has a kind of temple appearance to it. As delicious as they are it isn't the environments that are the star of the show but how the levels are designed and how the name of the level is integrated into the design. For example the tomb of time is the level that has that previously mentioned puzzle where the portals act as the hours on the clock. Mine tomb is a level where you need to navigate through the floor by mostly breaking your way through destructible walls and the design of the level pain and gain perfectly fits its name where a lot of puzzles involve dangerous traps that must be faced, sometimes needing to get hurt in order to progress or gain supplies. It is a smart level design that changes how you play the game with each and every level by adding new elements that the previous didn't have. And when you mix that with the generally well done environmental design of the level, you get some of the best level design in a dungeon crawler ever, ultimately making it an engaging and exciting experience from the very minute you step into the dungeon to the very end. The atmosphere to Dungeon of Dragon Knight is fantastic. From the very well done lighting to the eerie sounds from the ambience, the atmosphere has a dark almost horror vibe going throughout the entire game and one that really comes alive when you enter the floors with the bones and skulls in the walls. Between the subtle but effective ambience and the general darkness that lowers your field of view, along with the sound of the monsters nearby, results in you never knowing exactly when a monster is going to be in front of you until you are either on top of them or they're on top of you, generally about three grid squares apart from one another. And that is made even better with the likes of the bloody skeletons whose red eyes you can see glowing in the darkness ahead. It is absolutely brilliant. Between the ambience, the darkness, the monsters and the traps, never throughout the whole game do you ever feel safe with the exception of when you're at the shop. You get that sense that death awaits around every corner of the dungeon and it is a feeling that doesn't relent from the beginning to the end. Despite being an early access, Dungeon of Dragon Knight is one of the best modern dungeon crawlers out there. From its accessibility, fluent and well designed combat and puzzles, to its incredible and fluent level design, to the dark and oppressive atmosphere. Dungeon of Dragon Knight shows nothing but brilliance throughout. It does have a few issues such as a lack of combat difficulty options, imbalanced shop pricing and spell scrolls not having spell names. And yes it does have some expected early access technical issues like occasional frame rate drops and bugs like throwing one item sometimes disappearing, damage doesn't always calculate properly and while despite being in the pause menu the game actually doesn't pause. After that the only other issue I would have is that every single achievement in the game is set as secret. I don't mind games having secret achievements but to have the entire list secret is a little bit too much. Replaying a game hunting for achievements blind is not the most fun activity I can think of. Overall however what issues the game does have are minor and don't affect the overall enjoyment and playability of it. So whether you're a seasoned dungeon crawling veteran, genius puzzle solver, a combat master or someone who has never played a single dungeon crawler in their life, Dungeon of Dragon Knight is a game that anyone with interest should absolutely check out. And at an early access discounted price of €13.29 there is no better time to get your hands on this hidden gem.